Hey there horror fans and welcome to Sly Spy Gaming. The latest patch just dropped for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game and I'm here to relay all the juicy details to you about what exactly was patched, updated and changed, as well as what is currently in the works for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Before I dive in, I just wanted to extend an invite for all of you to join me Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time, where I live stream games like Texas Chainsaw, Starfield, Saints Row, and more. During these streams, I'll usually talk about the latest game news, so feel free to join me and chat about what is happening in gaming today. Now grab your chainsaws, because we're diving right into it, starting with the bug fixes. First up, there has been a lingering issue with Hitchhiker's Trap since launch, and it sounds like at least some of these game-breaking bugs have started to be ironed out. It seems that victims who were trapped in Hitchhiker's Traps had the potential to experience a bug where they were unable to use gaps, or interact with objects. But fear not, the development team has resolved at least a few of these issues, which should clear up the majority of the Hitchhiker Trap bugs. Next on the list of bug fixes is for those achievement hunters out there, and it appears that there was an issue with the perking up achievement not unlocking. However, this new patch seems to have implemented a fix for that issue, and now you can unlock the perking up achievement. The next bug fix should help speed up the matchmaking for sure. Apparently, there was an issue that forced all active players to wait for the full timer when choosing to continue to the next match due to disconnected players. This issue has now been fixed, which means that you can get back into the action faster with quicker matchmaking. They also fixed a similar issue in custom games as well, where the continue option was missing from the end screen of custom games. Well, the development team has fixed that too, so you can keep the terror going. So before I dive into the new game changes that were implemented in the newest update, I wanted to take a second and just say that if this video has been informative or helped you out at least a little bit, hit that like button and if you aren't a subscriber yet, don't forget to smash that sub button as well to stay up to date on your favorite games. Now, let's slice up the newest changes that were added in this update starting with the battery change. As promised from my last video, the devs had talked about their work on a potential battery fix and it is finally being implemented. During the stress test for Texas Chainsaw, both the battery and generator were somewhat annoyances that the family had to make sure that they turned on at the beginning of the match or risk a simple escape from the victims. This was changed at release where the generator was automatically turned on at the beginning of the match. but family still had to activate the battery. The developers have finally come around to making both active at the beginning of the match, which honestly just makes so much more sense to me and should give family players one less thing to worry about at the start of the match. Another change that has been made is that the developers have removed the option to respec characters in match lobbies. While I don't necessarily see the priority here, I can understand that this may actually help speed up match times for those who are respecting full character builds during the lobbies for some reason. Don't worry though, you can still edit your loadouts and spend skills in the lobby, but for respecs, you will have to head over to the main menu. With the new changes out of the way, it's time to move into the new balances that were added in the newest update, starting with a balance to the bone scrap limits. It seems that the bone scrap piles are now limited to three uses per pile. My thoughts on this is that we'll hopefully balance out the Rambo-esque Lelands out there and hopefully limit the cheesing of the valve escape as well. The development team mentions that it is still fine tuning the scrap usage and frequency to keep things interesting. Next, it seems like the developers are cracking down on XP farming. As I mentioned in my last video, the development team has decided to cut down on the minority of players who are XP farming with Cook by limiting the amount of XP you can earn from placing and removing locks repeatedly. You will still get the XP bonus for placing each of the three locks once. For me, this seems like such a minor issue to focus on when you have some other major game-changing issues, such as Sissy, to worry about. Like, are there really a bunch of cooks out there locking and unlocking their locks all game? If there is, who is actually complaining about this? I would really like to know. Next on the docket of balances, which is really a reversion, is the lobby timer being set to 3 minutes. This was changed in the last patch, and big surprise, players did not like having to wait even longer to get into a match. 
Therefore, the developers have decided to revert it back to the standard and original three minutes. Lastly, in their tuning and balancing section of their patch notes, the dev team noted that they are still working on their anti-cheat measures, which means that they are getting closer to re-implementing PC back into the fold of crossplay. Don't even get me started on that because I am still a little bit steamed about it. They didn't really go too in-depth on what they have progressed, but they have added a support system for those who encounter cheaters or hackers in public PC lobbies. I've added that link in the description below for those of you who do run into these D-bags. The last few items on the docket is some of the fixes and changes that are coming to Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the future, starting with some fixes in testing. Currently, it looks like the devs are testing out some cooldown increases for two notoriously complained about victims, Connie and Leland. From my point of view, I don't think that their abilities are that ridiculous as to needing a change, but apparently others do. On the family side, they're also looking into fixing an actual bug with Sissy where her poison essentially slows the victim to the point of being unable to outrun her. This is a pretty major one that has been around since launch which is why I was so surprised when they decided to instead focus on the cook XP farm issue. Also similar to last video they are testing out fixes for the special slaughterhouse escapes and I assume this mainly means the valve escape. They're also currently still investigating a specific hitchhiker trap and ladder issue, and they're also starting to investigate rebalances to the stealth system and resetting the fuse box. Lastly, they are aware of some issues with players getting stuck and party disbanding issues, but need more information on these. And there you have it, the latest patch for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game bringing fixes, changes, and fine tuning to keep the horror experience top notch. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you smash that like and subscribe button. And again, don't forget to join me Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time where I play some amazing games and discuss the latest in gaming news. Thank you all for watching, and this is Sly Spy Gaming, signing out.